why I would never, ever, ever support the priestly fraternity of St. Peter. So, I recently got a comment on my Instagram account. Here's what it says. Quote, The SSPX marriages are only valid if a validly ordained bishop allows it. Excommunications got lifted after the Mass, after, but the Mass is still illicit. The Vatican never said the excommunications were invalid. If you think the Vatican has no authority to say this, and John Paul II was wrong, you might like being seed or Protestant. If you want to be a traditionalist Catholic, then join the FSSP, Priestly Fraternity of St. Peter, which is in full communion with the Vatican. Never. Never. Ever. 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 And I'm going to say why. Now, before I go any further, I want to be clear that this is not intended as a personal attack against individual members of the Priestly Fraternity of St. Peter, conservative di or traditionalist leading diocesan priests, or, or people who are trying to get the Latin Mass in their dioceses. I have a lot of respect for these individuals. Often they are some of the people who are trying to get a fight, fight, on, fight on the ground and do the most amount of fighting. That being said, for a number of reasons, I think that they are, their efforts are futile and they should and they're actually making the situation worse. So let's go, go, so I've got about five reasons why I would never support the priestly fraternity of St. Peter. But before I begin, I want to say, well, I'm a convert to Catholic tradition. I was baptized in Novo Sordo, and I tried to get indult masses and, uh, in my area myself. I tried to support the priestly fraternity of St. Peter. I've used some of their resources in the past. So I have been, so if you're a member of Priestly Fraternity of St. Peter, or think SSPX and Civic Contests are wrong, I've used every argument that you've used. I've heard it all, and the answer is no. I've not heard a single new argument in, for the Fraternity of St. Peter in years, literally. So let's take a bit, so, made a short list. So let's go over the reasons why I would never again support the priestly fraternity of St. Peter. One, I actually find not being in good relations with the Vatican for the time being to be a good thing. I know this will surprise a lot of you considering I'm a Catholic and I've made and plan on making lots of videos in the future, both on Instagram and on YouTube, on why the papacy as an institution defined by Jesus Christ is essential to the Catholic Church, that you must believe in it. You cannot be Orthodox and saved. The papacy is absolutely essential under divine law. That's what the Bible the Church Fathers taught. 100%. I also, however, believe that the high priesthood of ancient Israel until the coming of the new law was mandated by God. I also believe that the king, title of King of Israel, or King of Judah, which was held by King Saul himself, the first king of Israel, who was anointed, personally selected by God, and anointed by his ex God's express command, was also founded by God, and you could not disobey Saul or rebel against him for any good reason, just for any good reason, without committing a grave sin. That said... But Aaron had to be disobeyed when he made the golden calf. King David had to flee, had to flee for his life for King, from King Saul, and was did what was right. The institution, of the papacy, is essential, and you cannot just disobey the Pope because you darn well feel like it. That being said, if the Pope literally does or says something contrary to the faith, you're not permitted to go along with it. And you have to call call out the behavior for what it is as being false and wrong. And if it's heretical, you call it heretical. There are plenty of cases of this in the Bible. We must accept the papacy. We must accept the papacy as it is taught in Scripture and the Church Fathers. And the Bible and Church history, when the Pope goes completely bonkers, you don't go you don't go completely bonkers yourself. So I will I will no 
notably point out I will, I, will notably, I will notably point out the Apostle Paul, who openly resisted the Apostle Peter. I will also point, as well as, and more notably, later in church history, St. Maximus the Confessor, who, much like Archbishop Marcella Fess, was, was given a church trial, condemned, and exiled. Because he was disobeying the Pope in preaching against monothelitism, even though Pope Honorius I has said not to do that. The Catholic Church recognizes him as a saint for this. If you are a Catholic of any sanity, with a memory of uh, any memory at all, the blessing of same-sex couples, Pachamama rituals in the Vatican, and, and Amoris Letizia in the whole nine yards, like, if this, even, never mind, 100 years ago, 20 years ago, within my own lifetime, this would have been completely unthinkable. The stuff that Pope Francis is doing right now. And when and in church history, notably from the case of St. Maximus Confessor, you do not go, you do not kowtow and go along with Pope with the Pope and his craziness, just for the sake of good liturgy. And so, you know, I personally think he's wrong, but, you know, don't want to rebel too much. No, there were when it's heresy, you harlan keep the faith. There's even a case, in the case of John the Twenty Second, notably, where after just three ser questionable sermons, um, various Catholic authority figures sent letters to the Pope saying, "You have thirty days to recount this heresy of you have three days to recount this heresy." His heresy was saying that there is no one in heaven. Say so you don't go to straight to heaven after you die. You don't go straight to heaven after you, you don't. People don't go to. He's saying no, no one went to heaven after the last judgment. Pardon me for stumbling. And you have thirty days to recount that that heresy, saying that no one is going to go to heaven to last after the last judgment, or we're going to withdraw or obedience from you and elect another pope. The Society of Saint Pius the Tenth does not go that crazy. <laughs> they do not go that hard. They've been quite generous, in my honest opinion, they've been quite generous to the Pope, in my personal opinion. And honestly, they have to do this. They have to openly say no to local bishops. We're going to teach the Catholic faith. They have to say no. We don't trust Pope Francis because he has the because he has done a lot of things to suppress traditional religious orders. SSPX needs to do what it needs to do to keep, keep the faith and we know this can be done biblically because of the example of King David. David tried to make it work with Saul. He even came back after being invited back one time. Then Saul tried to kill him again. Uh, and, we, and so we had to flee. And even when he was offered a chance to return and work for King Saul, David refused in the Bible and stayed in exile and was called a non is even called a non-Israelite. Much as SSPXers and Seeds are called non-Catholics today. Yet we know that in the Bible that God approved of what David did, not, not Saul. And we know that this that the actions of the Society of St. Pius X are necessary in this regard because Francis has shut down traditional religious orders. He has censored numerous conservative, even Novus Ordo conservative priests. I know of many diocesan priests have been told not to speak against various sins in, in their sermons by local bishops. Why we would not, why, and why would we not, why, why we would not want to be part of that is quite obvious. Sometimes to keep, unfortunately, we live in a rich, in a, in a world right now where to keep the basic Catholic faith and any trads who know this, indeed many trads who go to priestly, priestly fraternity at St. Peter parishes, know this. We gotta keep our distance from a lot of local hierarchy, just keep the Catholic faith. If it were otherwise, there would be no need for a priestly a fraternity of St. Peter in the first place. Number two. 
I find with the priestly fraternity of St. Peter is used to gaslight other threads and to gaslight them on real issues. So the priestly fraternity of St. Peter, if you look at how it's defined, and I've seen videos of the dedication of Our Lady of Guadalupe Seminary in, in, out in Nebraska when they dedicated that new chapel all those years ago. I have the DVD, Get to Me, to me by My Old Godfather. And they're talking about the charism of the priestly fraternity of St. Peter. It is not the SSPX charism. It is not to, the charism of the SSPX and of the Swedes is to maintain the traditional Orthodox Catholic faith. Outside of the church is no salvation. Ecumenism is a mortal sin. These are matters of faith. If you deny them, you're excommunicated automatically from the Catholic Church. I don't care who you are. That is not the charism of the priestly fraternity of St. Peter. It is adhering to Vatican II, but to let you have the Latin Mass. I'm traditionalist, but it's not about liturgy. Liturgy, of all the things that I'm concerned about, liturgy, it's a concern, but it's like pretty well near the bottom of all the things I'm concerned about in the, in the mainline Catholic Church today. What I'm concerned about is they are blessing literally same-sex couples. They are literally blessing... They are the, allowing for communion for the divorced and intermarried. They have, even prior to Francis, taking part in ecumenism and interfaith worship. Pachamama is crazy, but CCs wanted to happen under John Paul II, and no, a pope doesn't have the authority to bless that. The fact of the matter is, this is why I decided I would go to the SSPX, actually. Uh, I, because I thought the SSPX was wrong myself. Then I was looking for a parish to go to because the parish I was at was crazy. I was talking with other people about how, in, in my own godfather, about the situation in other churches. Like, oh, Canada is really bad. Oh, this place is really bad. Okay, how about this parish? How about the parish next door? Oh, no, you've got new agents going on that parish. Uh, what, uh, ask, ask this other woman, your conservative, she'd even asked and obtained a dispensation from her bishop to not send her kids to catechism because they're teaching heresy at a catechism class. And I said, okay, well, maybe the other countries are better. About, say, the United States. Oh, like, 50-50. It's coin toss. Depends on the diocese. Eh, and the diocese. How about France? Oh, modernist. Philippines, modernist. And eventually, I remember thinking about my vocation at the time. I just wanted to be a Catholic in a Catholic parish. That was it. I wanted the Catholic faith. How can I remain in communion with someone? And I was looking, could I, if I got married, married, the fact of the matter is, I could not send my kids to catechism. Because I could not, tr I could not trust that they would not, not only would they not be taught the Catholic faith properly, I would, I could almost guarantee that, and I taught catechism, I could almost guarantee they would be taught things contrary to the faith. I could not become a priest. Because not my diocese, or probably even elsewhere, because I could not guarantee that the bishop will not command me to do something contrary to the faith and, and keep obedience. Habitually. And that was the moment I decided, okay, if the SSPX was right, what would it look like? My situation, and it's happening across the globe, and that is what is going on. The people who go to Fraternity of St. Peter know this. And the reason I decided why not just go Priestly Fraternity of St. Peter, because, simple reason, it is a not just about going to the Latin Mass. It's about preserving the Catholic faith. That is not the state of charism. It's not just having some pretty Latin liturgy. And that's equally as good as the Nova Throw. No, it's about the fact that in the modern parishes, they're teaching things contrary to the faith. They are a different religion. Why would I want to be communion with a religion I do not believe in? Why would I call it Catholic when it teaches and believes things contrary to the Catholic faith just because they call themselves a Catholic bishop? If you teach a whole thing contrary to faith, you're not a Catholic. That includes bishops. And if you're not a Catholic, then you're not a Catholic bishop, and I have no obligation, nor do I have a desire to be communion with you. In fact, I have an obligation to be against you. And that's the
all due respect, God loves you, God loves you, maybe you were just misinformed, but you're still teaching heresy. I have to, I have to, you're an error as much as the Protestants are. I am sorry. Number three, reform from within does not work. How long has the priestly fraternity of St. Peter been going? When are we going to see those fruits of dioceses turning orthodox again? When are we going to see these fruits of parishes turning sane again? I keep on hearing, recently someone told me, oh, in 10 years' time, the woke parishes will be gone. Yeah, because they'll all be closed, because there'll be no Catholicism, period. That is your reform. They'll just die off, is the plan. I've been hearing that for 10 years, that in 10 years' time, modernist Catholicism will be gone. Yes, and it'll be replaced with outright atheism. I have not, I have seen note of cases where, I have seen the priestly fraternity of St. Peter come into my area and be promoted by people who I know and care about. The bishop allows and tolerates the priests in my area. The bishop tolerates the priestly fraternity of St. Peter to come in once a year. He does not give them uh, a big church. They have to book hotel rooms in some cases. And he doesn't want them to have the nice main a nice main church or main cathedral. Even now, they're... And that's the fraternity of St. Peter. Even with tradi tra traditionalis custodes, a lot of mass is being squashed. Meanwhile, modernists are running rampant in my area. How is that reform going? You know how Trish, Trish, so that is why I, so, it's simply not working. You know how Trish Shadoni's custodies affected the SSPX? We had a lot more people show up. <laughs> that was how it was affected, affected us. The FSSP was restricted and has to get, goes through all these rubber stamps. To get a fraternity of St. Peter in, or maybe to get an adult lap mass, find some priest who could do it. You know how hard it was to get an SSPX priest to come in? Got 10 people and sent a letter. And you know what I, and you know what I love most about the SSPX? Not just the beautiful Latin liturgy. Nice, but that is not the main thing. I know that when I hear the the, when the pre SSPX priest comes in, I might disagree with them on how to do the aftermath liturgy, aftermath events, and maybe exactly how to do some outreach to get more people in. But one thing I don't have to worry about is that he's going to teach the Catholic, the Catholic faith from the pulpit. He's always going to. I always worried whenever a new priest visited or transferred in Novus Little Parish, that would be the case. And the SSPX calls out that this is a problem, at least. The priestly fraternity of St. Peter, very much, at least in its official capacity, says, you know, there's no real problem, it's just a nice liturgy. And you have to be obedient with the local bishop, even though he's busting literally saw, saw the sin, sins, uh, grave sins, even though he is literally actively hindering basic orthodox the orthodox preaching. The Catholic Church is not a side chapel on a modernist cathedral. Number four. It, number four. Argu legalistic arguments. So look, so well, any tread watching. Here is how. If you are an SS, if you are, if you are a Novus Ordo Catholic trying to get an SSPXRC to come over to the main line, here's what they'll do. They will appeal to your trad sense of scruples and loyalty to the church. They will abuse it. They'll take advantage of it. Give you a horror case of legalism and scruples, so that you will, for the sake of obedience, accept and tolerate going to a mass, going to a church where they bl literally bl bless sinful relationships 
and do interfaith and ecumenical worship contrary to divine law, because obey, the bishop must be obeyed. They will ignore, and for the sake of that, they will basically say, every, they will de facto preach every other aspect of faith optional extra. The minute you're in, you'll find that no one else cares about obedience. In the Novo Sordo. Only when they're talking to you, felt you tried trad cats. Do they even speak about that? When they want to get you in line, line is that's the experience. I'll give you. In fact, I'll reread read that quote just to give an example. The SSPX marriages are only valid if a validly ordained bishop allows it. <gasps> Decree of the bishop says so. I guess the fact that Pachamama worship is going on isn't that big of a deal. The as communication is illicit after, but the mass is still illicit. Yes, we must go to puppet mass. Where well, the priest says same-sex relationships are beautiful from the pulpit. Yes, I've been at masses where that has happened. The Vatican never said the excommunications were valid. And it has never excommunicated the German bishops who do who knows what. If you think the Vatican has no authority to say this. Yeah, it, I would be, take them a lot more seriously if they were at least also excommunicating the German bishops for the heresy and kicking out all the modernist priests and modernist nonsense and not literally issuing new decrees authorizing the blessing of same-sex relationships. I would, you know, just saying, I would be a little more comfortable with that authority or at least think that the authority doesn't need... I would, I would think it would be a, a little more... Comfortable with, I'd be more comfortable with going along with that authority, obeying that authority, and maybe wouldn't be so apt to like either question its legitimacy or maybe say, maybe you have a legitimate authority, but maybe there's a time and a place where you have to even resist legitimate authority, like St. Thomas Aquinas says in the Summa, I might add, if you weren't literally doing Pachamama rituals, then you might like being seen or Protestant. FYI, I know a lot of people who, because of the modernism of the Catholic Church, have actually gone Protestant. For the record. And because of this endless nonsense, and people making scrupulous comments like this, and essentially Pope worship, like whoever, however great a Pope may be, even the holiest of Popes, should not be, cannot and should not, must not be elevated above the Catholic faith itself. Nothing that I believe is anything except what the Catholic Church has always taught. And it is being actively defied in parishes and dioceses. And it's gotten to the point where to actively keep the faith, I have to do that. I have to go to SSPX. Do you know why? Because the Purdy St. Peter won't even be allowed, may not be allowed in. And if it is allowed in, it's once a year. And we have to put up with the modernist craziness the rest of the time. That is the situation in my area, assuming the priestly fraternity of St. Peter can be allowed in after endless kowtowing. And again, I do want to point out that I've been in Facebook groups for Latin Mass studies, and they say we cannot speak up against ecumenism because the bishop will take away our Latin Mass. That is why it's being allowed. That's literally comments I've had with the Fraternity of St. Peter people. Which is why I want nothing to do, do with the priestly fraternity of St. Peter if that is what is going to be about. And honestly, being Sidvacontist, I'm sorry after uh, I think what you will about Sidvacontism, but after the allowing after Paducius Sublicans and the endless gaslighting I've heard saying it's oh it's not blessing simple relationships it's just it's blessing couples it means a blessing two individuals separately together stuff like that I'm sorry uh, after that even if you want to think Sibicon just are wrong and they and say this very well very well may be wrong there's lots of precedent precedent for thinking they might be mistaken it is not the worst option <laughs> Of those, I would say kowtowing and keeping silent when the Catholic faith is being mocked, derided, and cast aside and sidelined in the mainline Catholic Church for the sake of some Latin liter a bit of Latin at church, um, is far, far, far significantly worse. Denying the Catholic faith and side or sidelining it is far worse than questioning whether or not the guy who is sidelining it is legitimately holding the office or maybe should be disobeyed actively 
If you want Zing to be a traditionalist, then join FSSP, which is in full communion with the Vatican, who is doing all these crazy things with Pachamama and bless and has recently authorized same sex relationships to be blessed. Contrary to Romans 1 26 through 27. And has always been condemned by the church, even post Vatican II. This is a legalistic argument. These are legalistic arguments. To get us to be scrupulous and ignore the fact that the faith is being defied in mainland Catholic parishes. It is trying to. The fa legalism in the church, canon law exists in the church to uphold the Catholic faith, not to enable people to defy it and sideline it. That is basic divine law. This is literally. When, the, when Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees about. About, about making the traditions amend. It's a text that is constantly taken out of context by Protestants to, to oppose oral tradition in the church. That's not what, what Jesus is talking about. He provides an example of a, basically a rabbinical ruling saying that if you, it was a rabbinical ruling he cited, that said if you give all your treasure to the temple, you don't have to support your parents. Okay, you would know the commandment, he said, of worshiping father, of honoring father and mother. By doing what this guy wanted, doing what he suggests, I have, we would be reducing the first commandment, commandment of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt have no other gods before me, to essentially nothing. We would be reducing it to essentially nothing. We'd be, we would be reducing the creeds of the popes for centuries to essentially having been nothing and being in error or mistaken or misguided for centuries. The Holy Ghost must be doing a great job, apparently, just like it is. He's just like the Protestants would have to think if they were right, or the Mormons. They attack scruples about your marriage based on canon law. While violate, while actively violating the most basic divine law about what is required to hold, about what faith, the faith teaches. Even be part of the Catholic Church, you need to have the apostolic faith. They want that, they, these, what this person is suggesting is sidelighting this, sidelighting that. For the sake of a bit of Latin, that you might get occasionally, if the bishop is okay with it, of course. And just keep your mouth shut. Don't criticize as you have the night out and enjoy your Pachamama rituals at Mass. And don't say anything if they bless that three-way that three same-sex couple at the local parish after Mass. Because, you know, tolerance and Pius XI and Mortalum Animos, what the Church Fathers taught about all these matters, doesn't mean anything more because Vatican II has come along and you've got to be in communion with Vatican II. How dare you disobey? That is essentially... It is essentially legalistic gaslighting and abuse of canon law. That is condemned in the gospel explicitly by Christ our Lord himself. Canon law is meant to uphold, is used to uphold divine law, not thwart it, not, active, not enable heretics to sideline it, which is what is Fraternity of St. Peter is being used for. And we know for Trinity of St. Peter is being misused that way because if the local dioceses were serious about bringing back Catholic tradition, Catholic orthodoxy, even if you want to keep the new mass, let's put the, the, the Latin mass with the new mass onto the side, put the fraternity of St. Peter in traditional orders because they have this tendency to orthodoxy in charge of the training of new priests and just have them learn the new mass and teach them about parish Work and that, that that way they'll give have a good orthodox formation. Why don't you do that? Why don't why aren't they advised? Why aren't we talking about expanding the fraternity of Saint Peter to train new orthodox priests? Since everyone has been talking about for, for decades that there is that, that modernism pot, pot problem in the Catholic Church, even the Vatican II popes agreed with, would agree with that. I think even Francis, modernist crazy though he is, would agree with that. Well. Here you have these people supposedly obedient to the church whose charism 
inclines heavily towards orthodoxy. Why not put them in charge of training priests? Why have why why not put them in charge? You don't see that. Where are all the priestly fraternity of Saint Peter priests who come or asked to come in and help clean up modernism out of the dioceses and improve catechetical programs so that they are more orthodox? Kids actually learn things. I've taught, taught catechism myself in the Novus Ordo. You don't hear about that anymore. You hear a lot about charismatic renewal, but you don't hear about orthodoxy. Or the Catholic faith. You don't hear about it anymore. Number five. This is probably the biggest reason why. I will absolutely never join the Pippi Priestly Fraternity of St. Peter. And honestly, this in my this last reason stands alone for all of it. And is the final reason why I will actually say, okay, well, I don't just think the Pretty of St. Peter is wrong, but why I think it is actively dangerous for Tres to support them. Because I've seen it lead people away from the Catholic faith. And I don't just mean, oh, they're not obeying the bishop. I mean they no longer believe traditional Catholic doctrine. You say, oh, I want you can be a traditionalist with and while well, communion with the Vatican. Mm, yeah, no, yeah, they stop being a traditionalist is what I find. I find they get so concerned with being obedient to the local bishop and defending Pope Francis and his behavior that they will start defending sin. I know people who are inclined to priestly return of St. Peter. They also tried, there weren't that many, FSSP was in once a month. And, and not even once a month, once a year, if not, if ever. Bishop would barely tolerate it. And he was very, Bishop was very concerned. Oh, they don't have a role our role to play in our diocese. And eventually, he wanted to get into local diocese and parish life. And he's, I know this individual, he is very much imbued with modernism. Ecumenism is okay. I've seen, like, diocesan priests will celebrate Latin Mass. Say, let's, I want to be a priest. I want to celebrate Latin Mass. And they praise ecumenism after a while. They start defending Paducia Stiplicans, a blessing of same-sex couples. But that's obedience to the Pope. No, but yeah, if that's obedience to the Pope, then obedience to the Pope means disobeying the Catholic faith. If I have to choose between obeying the Pope and obeying the Catholic faith, I'm going to choose the Catholic faith every time. Individual, ro individual Roman pontiffs come and go. And even Popes I disagree with or dislike, sure. Obey them. But not above this guy. The Catholic faith must come first. Well, how do you know what the Catholic faith teaches? Because I am, that is my job as a Catholic. It is basic catechism to know what the Catholic Church teaches. If a parish priest told me to not believe in transubstantiation anymore, I would say he was either an ignoramus, had gone insane, or was a heretic, and I would stump him. If a bishop told me the same thing, even a pope, heretic, you're either heretic, insane, or stupid. One of those three. You know what? Same, bad. same thing if he believes that said that Jesus did not physically rise from the dead. Same thing if he said that Jesus committed sin. Same thing if he starts saying, you know, maybe it's okay if I bless these the same this couple of the same sex or this divorce and remarried couple to give their relationship a their, the couple that means that you're blessing the relationship a blessing maybe it's okay if we do these interfaith rituals in the Vatican and have images of Pachamama or put statues of Buddha on top of the tabernacle at Assisi like this great authority figure, John Paul II, did. St. John Paul the Great, uh, who prayed before the statue of Buddha. How dare you criticize? He's been canonized. You're venerating a guy as a saint who publicly, while he was Roman pontiff, prayed in front of a statue of Buddha. Put it on top of a tabernacle, literally on top of above Jesus, literally, physically, and prayed before it. No public repentance. No recantation of this error. And I'm supposed to defend this, or I'm supposed to even defend this? And I not only do I see people keep silent about this among people who go after the priestly fraternity of St. Peter, 
I find they actually actually start defending it. And the best you can hope for them, for the priestly return of St. Peter, is that they keep in their own little bubble. I used to be involved in getting an envelope crowd in, but they're so obsessed with attacking Sidvicantus. They're so obsessed with keeping the bishop happy so that they, and, they, and not criticizing ecumenism or any of the problems in the church today that need to be called out. Modernism is the reason why it's for SSPX. That needs to be called out. SSPX is the one who's doing it. Fraternity St. Peter is not. They just, at, at best, steep in their little bubbles, and they just want to keep their own little bubble world church and their own little church world. They have no desire to expand. They have no desire to evangelize, and they have to keep their mouths shut to keep the bishop happy. Not saying there aren't tendencies like that in the SSPX, but you know you can at least push back against it without getting the bishop mad at you. I have never actually met an SSPX priest, ever, who was mad at me about the idea of evangelizing. They might say maybe they can't do it for practical reasons because like, they have just so much on their plate. Maybe they're just not practically good at it. At it. But if a if lay man who is, feels called to evangelize and asks for some guidance to the priest and just starts inviting people to Mass and sells, sells people outside the Catholic Church's no salvation, yeah, they, they see, they're pretty happy with that. Not like Pope Francis who says, don't evangelize. That's bad for interfaith. Not like the fraternity of St. Peter who says, don't criticize the ecumenical movement and its errors. That'll get the bishop mad at us and that'll take away our Latin Mass. Supporting fraternity of Saint Pe priestly fraternity of St. Peter puts you in puts Catholic tradition in a bubble and ultimately smothers it. I have seen it multiple times over. And that is the final reason why I will never, ever, ever support the priestly fraternity of St. Peter. If you're watching this and you're in the fraternity of St. Peter or attending the new mass, please stop. Please stop going. Stop enabling these people. Stop supporting a parish that has stopped teaching the Catholic faith. Go to the people who are actually believing the Catholic faith and want to see it grow and thrive. Go there. Go Stop attending your Nova Scotia parish. Get your Orthodox trad friends out of there. Join them to join you. Start saying the rosary at your home and invite the SSPX to come in. Let the Nova Scotia parish line kick their feet. Just evangelize Protestants or atheists and start converting them. Maybe they have to do a long catechumen because the priest can't come in. But evangelize them. P comments like this. They say, oh, scruples. They're, they're just appealing to trad scruples. Ignoring a real problems in the Catholic Church. And they want to put Catholic tradition in a bubble. Don't support them. Support the SSPX. God bless. Three rabbis for everyone who is all trads without scruples who are supporting the priest of St. Peter. Ave Maria, grazie per adamus cum, benedicta fribus et benedicta spiritus meris tu Iesu, sancti mi matri opanobus pectorbus nucleus nostri men. Ave Maria, grazie per adamus cum, benedicta fribus et benedicta spiritus meris tu Iesu, sancti mi matri opanobus pectorbus nucleus nostri men. Ave Maria, grazie per adamus cum, benedicta fribus et benedicta spiritus meris tu Iesu, sancti mi matri opanobus pectorbus nucleus nostri men. Nomi Patris, Epidus, Spiritus Sancti. Amen.